On to our first story, it seems that in South Africa the best of plans can become the best of alleged scams. Like an elaborate plan to use the buses that were bought for the Soccer World Cup as part of Port Elizabeth's transport network. Well, eight years and two and a half billion rand later, they're still baking in the sun. John finds out who's been caught offside. The integrated public transport system in Nelson Mandela Bay gained momentum ahead of the Soccer World Cup in 2010. A memorandum of understanding was signed with the taxi industry and the system was ambitiously called Le Bongo Letu, our pride. But fast forward five years and despite a price tag in excess of two billion rand, Le Bongo Letu has stalled. I've never seen any project milked financially like the RPDS from, from Nelson Mandela Bay. Never ever. Local businessman and chairman of the Ratepayers Association, Kobus Gerbe, has sacrificed every spare moment over the last six years, including much of his family life, business turnover and personal safety, to investigate corruption in the metro. He cultivated whistleblowers with relentless tenacity to build a thick file of evidence. I warned that time, Maya, that they're busy stealing your milk while you're drinking your coffee. I met <laughs> with Kupas, uh, the ratepayers. We used to fight with them because they were of the view that the city is not embarking on remedial actions in terms of their audit reports. Zanakolo Waila was deployed by the ANC as PE's executive mayor in 2009. His term was meant to end in 2016 only, but today he's back in Joburg at his trade union home. His mayoral career prematurely cut short by his corruption-busting activities. So when I came in, I had to find a strategy of saying, where do we start? Unfortunately, I had to start with what is called the diagnosis of the institution. Waila brought in the Special Investigations Unit to diagnose what he saw as entitlement and wasteful expenditure. His report was quashed by an ANC faction in the council. In this period, hundreds of millions of rands flowed into the city from national coffers for the integrated public transport program. There is no control of how taxpayers' money gets spent. There is no accountability. Nobody gets uh, all accountable for their actions. And that's why there is no control. The, uh, the, the, it, be it became a free for all. Until last year, Roslyn van Grieren handled job profiling for the Metro. It was the appointment of a wholly unsuitable project manager that alarmed her. The educational qualification was a postgraduate tertiary uh, um, qualification in engineering or the built environment. Um, experience, they were looking at something like 15 years in a technical or managerial role. Without managerial or technical qualifications, advocate Mkleli Tomase got the job. Uh, what was the reaction of yourself and the rest of the council? He was at the time um, in the legal services division as an assistant director. And um, when I heard that he got the position as a, a legal person without, as far as I know, any technical or engineering background, I just wondered how on earth he was going to pull this whole thing off. I think the IPTS, first and foremost, is one of the most important projects in terms of the history of the apartheid era. number of black communities and Africans stay far away from their workplaces and cities. By 2007, Cabinet decided bus rapid transit in 12 major centres was the solution. Then the 2010 Soccer World Cup's transport requirements brought planning forward. Retired automotive engineer Pierre Hubert warned against the wholesale importation of thinking from South America at the time. Center islands would destroy traffic flows. Brick lanes would constrict narrow roads. This is not exactly Bogota, Colombia. No, it was never practical. However, the planners would not sit down and talk. If you said anything anti, you were anti uh, 210 World Cup, you were anti development. And so the city bought 25 articulated buses at a cost of 100 million rand to ferry World Cup guests. Today, these are baking in a municipal parking lot. I mean, you've got these big buses with the doors on the wrong side. And Gerber calculates over a quarter of a billion rand has been spent on construction. But without stations or walkways, more money is needed if the system is to work. Hubert feels the engineers should have known better. They're all bound by a code of ethics. 
civil engineers may not favour the client, that is, in this case, the Department of Transport in the city, to the detriment of the community at large. Those wanting to milk the system have an ideal tool at their disposal. They're called deviations and allow proper supply chain management to be circumvented. They're supposed to be used in emergencies and only under very specific circumstances. In the last three years of the RPTS, there was no tenders done. They passed contractors year after year, month after month on a deviation with no emergencies. Taking a closer look at some of the individuals and companies that have profited most from the IPTS, one name comes up more often than others, Farid Fakir. This is one of his offices. Apparently he has close ties to the ANC, is notoriously elusive and very rarely, if ever, gives interviews to the media. He's actually operating out of eight, nine companies in the metro. And as far as the transport uh, program is concerned, a number of these companies, as you say, crop up uh, at various times. They all seem to be very different companies that do very different things. So what is he exactly, a jack of all trades? <laughs> if you look at his business card, he must have passed about five universities in his lifetime, you know, so from engineering, painting and, and uh, project management, uh, whatever business the Metro is op uh, uh, involved with, energy, whatever, uh, he's the man. Fakir's company, Aerostyle, was appointed on deviation to do marketing for 6 million rand over 12 months. Aerostyle was paid in full, on invoice, a day after its appointment. Another of Fakir's companies was contracted on a 3.8 million rand tender to supply an e-tendering system for the Metro, not the IPTS. To date, 43 million rand has been paid, of which almost 10 million is from IPTS funds that are not to be used for anything other than the IPTS. Fakir's attorney could not reach him to answer to these allegations. When we realized that things were going wrong with the IPTS, we appointed the Vosipikul. It created a serious problem for us. He's a guy, he's a business person, Deben. He came to me and told me, you're not going to make it to 2016, but it's not too late. All what you have to do is to obey instructions in so far as the IPTS from the region, from national. Waila saw firsthand how business meets politics in the ANC's offices, as politicians and metro officials who should be independent explain their actions to him. When I arrived in the offices of the organization, it was quite strange to see people from supply chain from the institution were in the office, all of them. When I ask one of the leaders of the organization why these people are here, you can't be appointing me as a mayor, but you are hollowing the institution. And they said, no, we've got an assignment to make money for the organization. And so these are some of, of the issues. Even if you go for audit, uh, whether auditor general, you can't audit the political instruction. You audit what is prevailing within the institution. The Metro is currently teeming with investigators. Kaba's 400-page file has gone to the Hawks, Treasury and Ministries of Cooperative Governance and Tourism. It's also gone to AfriForum, who are backing him with funds to take each IPTS contract to court, demanding that they be set aside and that misspent money be repaid to the taxpayer. The first High Court application has been lodged against Fakir's era style. Forty other cases are in the pipeline. I cannot be a mayor of a corrupt city, uh, and I'm not going to be. Those who are corrupt will not work in this city. There are high hopes for new executive mayor Danny Ordan. Appointed in May, 17 implicated officials have been suspended on his watch. Before he could be hauled over the coals, project manager advocate Mkhleli Chamase resigned, clearing out his Facebook page. There's also no sign of life at the two houses he started building for 3.7 million rand without bond assistance. His lawyer declined our request for an interview. Jordan appointed a committee in council to bring him recommendations on taking IPTS forward. DA Ward Councillor Mornay Stain serves on it. We were very optimistic with the fact that a separate committee had been established to deal with it. The problem arises that it hasn't been taken seriously again. Um, our first meeting for this committee since May was called at the end of August 
And at that meeting, some of the members actually received the agendas walking into the meeting. The committee had to decide on the spot about continuing compensation for 60 taxis taken into storage to stimulate the need for buses in a renewed pilot effort two years ago. Khadba photographed some in no condition to be on the road yet demanding payment. Gregory Rockman heads the taxi industry body that's been negotiating with the Metro. We will admit that some of our vehicles uh, in general now, I'm not talking just about the 60, may not have a roadworthy certificate. This is the reason why we support the process of the IPTS, because we know all those ills that are there within the industry, it will be able to curb that. And as long as they are in storage with council, we are saying to, to council, you know, you pay us the compensation. We were promised that as soon as the pilot stops, we will move into the 12 year negotiated contract. If government is slow, they can't blame us as the industry. The volatile taxi industry is now on a knife's edge, waiting for the project to go somewhere. We were looking at a six to 800 million corruption RPDS uh, for that one calendar year. I believe the corruption they, they now they uncovered is most probably close to about three billion, if not more. I've got belief on people more than leaders because people will not be fooled forever. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.